Good day, this is Ian here. Just going to do a uh, video tutorial on how to put the brooder um, that we have available. And hopefully this can be a nice uh, instructional on how to assemble the, your new brooder. So here we are, starting the video. This is the package, how it comes in, in the box. Okay, here we are with the box all unpacked and all the bits and pieces lying everywhere. Uh, so it's just, this is just my uh, the lounge room where the kids learn a lot of stuff, blocks and numbers, clocks, etc. Now, we've got the light bulbs, the heat ceramic and the LED light, the fan, our guard, screws, the fitting for the ceramic heat lamps, the fitting for the LED light in the middle, the two fans, uh, all your screws that you that you need. These are all blocks that you need later on, which we'll get to it later. Um, your handle, uh, screws, screws, um, fan hole covers, uh, and moving down to here. Now you get a lot of scraps which are part of the packaging. Now these are all scraps, you can tell because they're all cut out of off cuts and they might have screws in them. Just be careful, some are quite sharp still sticking out. So these were uh, used to ensure that your packaging of your brooder uh, uh, was held in place properly. So they use these as braces and support within the box. Just to quickly run through the components, the main components of the, um, of the brooder box, just uh, think of it as a big box. That's your front facing, the top of the facing, which has all your control systems. Your, your seven day timer for the LED light, and then of course your two thermostat. Thermostat control, one for the heat lamp and one for the, uh, the fan. And that's the bottom uh, rail, the bottom track where your purse back, uh, will, the door will, will be uh, running on. So that's the top with a rail track there and the bottom with the track there okay so that's the top and the bottom the face of the uh, of the brooder box coming up uh, over the back that's the mesh floor which the little chicks will run on um, coming down here that that's big rectangle is the top of the box that's the same size as the bottom of the box how do you tell which is the bottom which is the top the top has no markings uh, and with all this, all the holes are pre-drilled for the screws, okay? So they're all pre-drilled, so no markings at all, just a perfect square. That's the top of the brooder, the roof, the box of the box. And coming down to, from the bottom here, uh, this is the bottom of the brooder, and it sits this way up. Can you see all the holes are pre-drilled? And there's actually pencil marking to show you where you put the support, uh, the support rails or blocks or, of, um, of foam. So the, the whole material is made out of foam sandwich board, very light for what it is and of course moving down from the back you've got the of course the mesh floor you've got the uh, top you've got the this is the back back of the brooder box and you notice that that's the notch there on the top right so keep that on the top right um, that's where all your electrical connection is and that's where the wire uh, comes out well if you really, if you forget it doesn't really matter you can also drill a hole and put the wires through but just the notch there for you to have the wire um, and these are your sides of your brooder box, brooder box uh, with the uh, fan installation holes and the air, the air, the air slots and the air slots for the back as well. Okay, so that's all there, and that will be all the other uh, bits and pieces that you need to build up inside for the support uh, to give the clearance for the poop tray. So one poop tray will sit here, one, two, and your third poop tray. So three poop trays matching the three section of the wire mesh. Uh, first of all is to pre-drill the, um, the, the light globe uh, holders for the heat lamp and the LED lamp and pre-drill them and take them off or leave them on there and then when you get to work with it, uh, it'll be much easier. If not, you would be just sort of upside down trying to fix things. So what I like to do is put a mark which says front so you know once this is so this is the underside okay so this we're looking at it we're actually looking at the roof on top of the roof now so that's the front edge so with all this thing can you see how there's fittings there is the lip for the so point that to the front so that's where the wires are all going to connect because the facing is going to sit there at the front with all the um electrical connections so that's there with the lip boom and here that's the gap for the lip right there 
sorry focus there you go it's a bit hard because it's white on white so face it so space it out evenly uh, do not put this the heat lamp too close to the side because they, it's, it's quite warm it's quite hot you don't want to be right on the side of the box bring it in you know uh, measure it out and just space it out evenly 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 so there's air gaps there's air there's space and space front and back front and back evenly and there you go so we'll screw this down and then we'll, we'll leave it as that. Now I've attached the, the middle uh, the middle light, which is the for the LED. Um, all you measure is the center from that end to this end. Find the center from left to right. Find the center, draw a line, and bang, and just put it. You don't have to be exactly in the center, just as long as you mark the lines out. Position it roughly there, boom, approximately. And the screws we use are these little, these little short ones. Um, you can see that you've got long ones as well. Uh, use the short ones as it will not go through the the board uh, it's nice and short it just bites halfway to the board instead of going through uh, and these will be for holding the wires in place with a hammer um, later on so yep that's okay the these are the three light fittings already installed uh, in the uh, correct position so as you can see <coughs> I, I've actually you know, marked out the cross for the center and basically put it in a, in a smack in the center put the four screws in and of course that's facing the front with an arrow. All right, so same with that, the hole. Um, that's facing the front and it's in the center. Close enough is good enough. Um, just measure it out uh, yourself. Uh, and there we go. Now looking at the side panels, these are the two side panels, left and right. The top, the circle is always the hole. The circle is always, sorry, the circle is always the hole. The circle is always the top of the brooder box. If that's the top, okay? And this is the front with the two notches. So the notch, notch, that is the front of the box. That is also the front of the box. That's the top of the box, of the side panel, sorry. Yeah. So let's put now, it together. Now, just taking a look at it uh, in this position. So this is the bottom of the box, okay? So now it's sitting on the back. The brooder box is sitting on its back at the moment. <clears throat> That's the three position, the three slots for the um, poop trays. Now, how it all sits is the. I better not touch this. It's gonna fall on me. The back sits flash, flush, uh, sits flat on the floor, and the bottom, which is this, sits on the floor as well, as you can see from there, and you just butt it up against it, like so. Okay, so that's how it sits, like an L. So with the um, both the back and the bottom is both touching the floor. See, not on top of each other, but touching the floor. And your side will naturally match up. As I can just carefully, without hitting anything, like whatever. There we go. And as you can see, this finishes off flush with the front of the box. So that's flush. So that's the correct uh, orientation of everything. Take a look from inside. See, everything is flush, even the top section here. It is also flush, okay? Okay, let me explain the screw and screw sizes, okay? You've got your long screws, which are these. Then you've got, of course, these are your smaller screws for your light bulb fitting, okay? Which we used already, so there's two more spare ones, that's fine. And over here are your short screws. You can see one is short and one is long. So, whoops, there we go. One is long, one is short. Now, the long one is used um, where there is where you butt up against but let's call it the uh, uh, end butt joint a butt joint so that will give it maximum strength it's going long and deep and you hold in biting quite nicely but you only use the short one when you've got two blocks of wood going together like this where you can't have it too long or else you shoot through the second board as demonstrated here see that see that actually goes past um, the two boards sandwiched together, uh, remove that, they'll be perfect. And coming through here, in my other bits and pieces, this is your wire holder. Your wire holder, which is not focusing, it's a bit hard to focus, sorry. So that's basically to hold the wires in place, to hammer it down. And these are the screw caps, which you will cap onto the end of the screws, uh, like, like so. Let's see if I can do it with one hand. Sort of like that. See that? That covers it up nicely. Um, so you, when you um, screw the actual screws in to the board, don't go past 
being flush with the board. To screw it in, flush. And they'll allow for these plastic caps to be uh, capped on to your, to your screw to hide the screws. Okay, let's put the, uh, let's secure the side panel uh, to the bottom of the board uh, and of the box and we're using the long screws, long screws here. And remember, um, cordless drill, magnetic tip, makes it a lot easier, doesn't fall down. You can basically work with it, so if you shake it hard enough, it will fall down. But basically it holds it there and like everything is all pre-drilled from the entry point, there's no need to drill the, the, the board that's behind it, that, that's getting fixed to, just flush, make sure this is flush, work it, and here we go, one, two, three, drill. And like I said before, don't over drill, just turn the, turn the um, very slowly, you want to just flush, flush with it so that you can uh, then later on, if you want to, put these uh, oh, lost it. These uh, screw end caps on here, so it hides the actual screw heads. But for me, I'm not going to bother with them. They're going to end up probably falling off if uh, you bump them. So just, oops. There we go. Align the next. <coughs> when you do screwing this this kind of work, right? Do it from the top to the bottom. Go one by one. Don't go one on top. And one at the bottom because if there's a bow it's very hard to work with the bow so align it so the next one on the next screw everything's flush perpendicular same thing put it in place and fire away so it's very slow put your drill on slow speed and that's all you need put the body to it and one plus two more on this side so it's four screws <coughs> and remember using the long screw not the short one we're using the long one for good, uh, good holding strength. There we go. Flush. Drill into it. Just pulling up, pulling up, pulling up. Beautiful. There we go. That's attached to the side. <coughs> We're happy with that. <coughs> now let's go and work on the other okay. side. Okay, the other side. Same deal. Long screws. And this will sit on the back, like so, sitting on top. And push that flush. If it doesn't come up flush, just make sure you get it flush. It could be a bit of a bow in the board circle because it's such a long length. You can pack it up and make it flush if you want to. But if you can still see that. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not in the way, but you get the idea. So make sure it flush. There we go. There we go. She's in. Next screw. Of course, making sure that it's perpendicular. Flush that way as well. She is. Remember not to overdo it because. You, you strip the screws very easily if you uh, go too fast and too deep. Look at bites. So right now, everything's very flimsy at the moment. But once I start putting the back and um, they'll reinforce the whole lot. The last screw at the bottom. Pulls it nicely. That's what it's doing. Back a little bit. There we go. Done. And if you do strip a screw, uh, don't stress. Just get a drill bit. Uh, a drill, same size as the pre-drill hole, just drill another hole, only through the first part of the board, okay, the 14mm, and then try again. There we go, that's that. Now with the two sides attached to the bottom, we're going to flip it around 90 degrees, so it ends up being the right way up. So carefully, two person will help you, it's easier if they can, but if not, if one person is easy because this is so light, um, just carefully position it this way. So as you can see, now we're looking at it from the front, um, the way that it should be. That's the bottom of the brooder box, the left side, right side, top is missing, and back is missing at the moment. So what we do is we will lift the back up, like so. Now, which way is the back? Oh, one thing to note is make sure you have all the, um, there's a protective layer, uh, which is uh, represented with this glad wrap material. Uh, on one side of the of these board, make sure it's always on the outside. So when you finish with it, you can peel it off. If not, on the inside, <laughs> you're gonna have a bit of trouble. So make sure the white, uh, the inside has no uh, no layers of glad wrap, the protective material, right? And generally, with the inside, it's all the pencil marking, all the references. Now, with the back of the of the brooder box, see this notch? That's the notch that we talked about 
earlier on in the video, we had it flat on the floor. So the notch is to be on top. Okay, the notch on top, notch on top. Okay, so once again, um, let me just flip it around so we can actually get the video and, and uh, get it filmed carefully. As you can see, it's very light, it's not heavy at all. Um, let's just try not to um, move it too much. That should make a good uh, video, a good angle. Let me just check the camera angle. Yep, she is looking pretty good. Slightly more down. There you go, that will work. So with the long screws, always use the long screws um, when it's a butt and join. And remember, don't over tighten. Over tightening will strip the screws. So flush. And in this case, that's worked on the bottom. So that's the corner. Everything's all locked in, the back, the sides, and the bottom's all locked in. We'll just do this. There we go. Just nice. And if you want to make things easier, just grab, grab the screws, give it a twist or so, then through these holes, so you can go bang, 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 get more than one hit. Now, because this board is bowed, I've actually got this board pushed in on the inside, slanted in, to make sure that we get this side flush. And then you can pull it out as you work up. So get this there. This side. Back it up a bit, sorry. There we go. Beautiful. Flush, slowly pull it back up flush, like so. There we go. All you need to do is get the screw head to be a wee bit under the face of the board, and that is more than enough. So that's that side done. How's the angle of the camera on that side? Beautiful. Now I've got to go left-handed so you guys can see. Let's see how it, how it goes. So I'm using my right hand, I'll be blocking the view. There we go, feeding these screws in. I'll let you in on a little bit of a secret. I'm an ex-cabinet maker, many, many, many moons ago. Before I started running my own business, but anyway, this is quite sort of handy as well, I guess. Next is all flush. Just flush, just below the surface. Flush or just below. Oops, screws already there. A little bit unco with my left hand. No. There we go. There we go. I guess if you use a screwdriver, it's going to work as well. But um, just with a, with a cordless drill, makes it way easier. There we go. Left-handed, a bit weird, but flush. There we go. So this is the uh, the back. So it's secured on these two sides, but yet this part is still not secured. See that? It's still moving. So we need to carefully flip it around. Uh, and the best thing to do is to grab it from the top side, bring it down. Okay and carefully flip it again, like so. Oops, slippery floor, not good. You've got carpet, you'll grab. Let me just try this again. There we go. And that's how it is from the back. Now, if I can flip it around uh, carefully so you guys can see it, there we go. This thing's very light, it's made out of foam. I mean, once you put it together, it's going to be heavy, of course, because it's so big. But for what it is, is it's a very light material. Insulates very well, and it's waterproof. How's my camera view? Checking, beautiful. And this is where you might need two persons to help you. Right now, it is, it's not flush, it's sunk in a bit. So I've got myself a bit of a stick. 
protein stick, push it to the back, I pushed it out and it's flush, and you apply pressure from the top, like, like so, to hold it in place, okay? And then... Ta -da. That's it, and I've missed the first screw, which is easy. Just there. That's where you push. But right at the corner. And we slowly work our way. If the next screw hole is looking very, very good. It's looking fantastic. There we go. There we go. And the third one. Oh, it's flush as well. Again, there we go. It was like half a mil. There we go. That's good. And here, same thing. Just a half a smidge out. Oh, it's not long enough. No, I can't reach it. Need a little bit longer, longer stick. There we go. Left-handed again. Done. And the last screw. Remember, always use the long screw. The long screw for these. We call it butt and joins there. But it's the butt of one piece of wood to another piece of wood. Well, not wood. Foam wood in this case. Oh. I think it's time for a coffee soon. Anyway, so that's uh, the back, the sides, and the bottom all sorted. Okay, for the next part, um, this is all assembled. We're going to fix these supports that goes in this position, and the support on the side that goes into these. Uh, the pencil already outlined it, uh, already outlined the one right there. Okay, so the, the support that goes onto the side. And to the bottom. So this, this is the base of the of the uh, brooder box, so the trays can sit in, and then the mesh floor will sit on top of that. So I want you to look out for six pieces of uh, blocks of foam foam panels. Now you've got one, two, three, four. These four are the same height, so it's very easy to find out. See that they're the same height, same height, but they are different different uh, thicknesses this way. So if I bring it up like this. Can you see how there's a step? Two of them are shorter, two of them are taller, thicker. So go with the taller one. We want to use the taller one. And how do you check? So we put the shorter one on the side. Um, the taller ones, they are for the middle here. One there. Stay. Oops, not staying. And one goes here. Hopefully it's just stay for the video. Let's have a look. Um, okay. So that's how... They're going to sit. So why do we choose the taller one instead of the shorter one, or well, the thicker one? Because if you put it to the side, see the markings? That's where the strip's going to go. See how this perfectly is in line. So there's a clear, clear the top line. So after we put, uh, find yourself two of these small sticks. In the kit, there'll be four small sticks all together. But uh, we'll be only using, using two. And... Uh, as of now, the customers who has already got these brooders, brooders um, the holes will not be pre-drilled. You will have to drill them yourself. On the next production run for all our new customers, we'll make sure that these will all be pre-drilled. So there's no drilling on, on the customer's part. Um, when you drill it, drill four holes evenly spaced out. You know, Come in a 20 mil from, from the edge and then just space it out evenly for the next two in the middle. So there's four holes. And drill... You can see um, this piece is actually 14 mil by 14 mil. It's a square block. The board thickness is 14 mil. Now, when you drill it, drill on the shiny side. See how there's a shiny side, and there's always one side with the protective um, glad wrap layer. So drill on that side with the protective layer or the shiny side, and not the rough side because that's the middle of the core. So the the most strength you get out of it is by drilling through the shiny side. So yeah, so just think of it shiny. Not shiny, rough, shiny. So drill to the shiny side. 
and these, uh, like I said, will be fixed onto where those markings are. So once that is fixed, that determines the height where the um, the bottom of the mesh will sit. And if you look at this one here that we chose, look at that. See that? That is the same height as that. So we choose the ones. This board, this piece, the taller one, not the shorter one. Okay, so let's fix it up. Okay, just to give you the orientation before I put the camera on the side, I'm gonna I'm gonna hang the camera here. So we're looking at that corner. That things are sitting there. So hook it up here. If I can get it to hook up here nicely, hopefully there we go. Turn the camera this way. And uh, how's that? Get the top of it. There we go. I want you to pay attention to. There's pencil mark already drawn here. Actually, the pencil mark actually stops short of the bottom. It's telling you to raise this piece 14 mil, which is 40 mil, so that it's flush on top. <coughs> I don't know if you can see that. See how it's flush on top? Uh, this is a mistake. Do not have it flush on top. Put it hard up against the floor so there's a 14 mil gap because there's a panel that will go on top which will sit in there, all right? So just bear in mind, make sure that there's, there's a gap, there's a lip there. Uh, and make sure this is hard up, butting right to the bottom of the box as it stands now, but which is really the back, the back side of the board. And match the two pencil lines. See, there's two pencil lines drawn. Trace it up for you. So just, just do that. Um, I've actually, went according to the pencil mark before and had a flush on top which is wrong so but for easy fix there we go second screw and we always use the short screw remember oops always use the short screws so you don't go through the wall And get your fingers if you overdo it. Make sure the pencil line matches up like so, <coughs> that's good. And let's show the other side as well whilst we're at it. So, moving back away from the box, coming back to this side, latching the camera on here, and the angle should be about right, not quite. A bit of adjustment. Oops. It's looking sweet. Now we'll do the same thing. So once again, hard up at the bottom. So hard up at the bottom. Okay, uh, match the first. There we go. First hole. Okay, just carefully drill it in. There we go. Make sure it falls within the traced out lines, the pencil lines, and the next one. Beautiful. The third one as well. And then the final fourth one as well. Whoops! Let me just eye it with my eye there, just to stretch. Here we go. Okay. It is beautiful. Okay, now we're going to work on the back. <coughs> well, the bottom. Sorry, the bottom. These two. We already put these two in. And now, just to confirm why we're using. Why these, the height of this is correct is because we're going to butt it against here. Now the camera is not going to show it too well there, but I'm just going to quickly bring the camera in. Like so. Sorry, my hand's in the way. See how that sits flush beautifully? That is flush. That's the correct height because that's going to end up in, in the middle there to give support for the, um, the actual floor. Now, I'm just going to put this camera back into here. Back in that position, we're happy with that, are we? Yes, we are. 
Ignore the corner of the table there. <coughs> Once this is in place, the mesh floor will sit on top. So let's get my drill. Grab my shears over here. And we're using long screws, okay? Long screws, why? Because we're drawing into this from the bottom. Everything is already pre-drilled, the holes over there. It's all pre-drilled. Follow the, uh, the marking and flush with the back of the board. So there's a 14 mil gap on top here as well, okay? There's a gap on top. A step, rather. So match it up, like so. So this is the divider for the poop trays. Match up both ends. Happy. There we go. One in. Next one. Make sure you're within the traced lines. Make sure it's center. If you're within the trace lines, you're not going to shoot through, you're not going <coughs> to miss the panel that you're drawing into. There we go. Make sure you're taking the video from the back. Six screws at the back. Well, behind one end here. Done. <coughs> and just to show you what it looks like, the light, get the camera on. So what I did was I just held it. I held that uh, that plank of wood between these two traced uh, lines, and we just drilled six holes or oh, screwed six screws into the pre-drilled holes which are these pre-drilled holes okay coinciding with the traced out pencil mark in there and here is the back shot of the next one that i'm going to um, install up with the panel bottom going for a walk on the over here just confirm that it's the right size to the side beautiful happy with that sit up there line it up grab me six long screws line up long screws Four, five, six, here. Yeah. Line up with my screwdriver, uh, corner drill. <sighs> if you're on carpet, it'd be easier on your knees. Here we go. Next one. Here we go. Make sure you line up between the traced lines, like so. It's going very slow, so you don't strip it. It does strip quite easily if you go too fast. Okay, so we need to trace the line. Okay. That's my phone going off. Noise. Okay. Lovely. And the last one. Make sure it's right. My manure tray is outside, so I'm not sure it's working later on. So if I were to flip this back on this white way, bottom side down all the way it's supposed to be, you will see we have a section on, like so. Can I see that? Beautiful, we can. So as you can see, starting to take shape. And with that in this position, I'll show you the, um, the actual bottom, the mesh floor that the quail sits on. So this is all slidable, removable. How's that? For a fit. So that's how it sits, okay? And, and of course, because this is stepped back, it's flush, she's flush, she's flush, and she's flush on this end. And this will slide up for cleaning. Okay, once we put the panels on here, you'll see later on. Uh, <coughs> that's it. Of course, this one will be a bit of a play because uh, 
panel is long, but once you put uh, the quails in there, put your food and water, and everything will just sit flat. So let's just slide this. Oh, there's no, this doesn't need this in there. I'm going to show you how to install the fan because now we've got it in a good position. We're going to install these fans, which are here. Let's see, the screws are here. These are the fan units. Now, there is the protective grill, like so, to stop your quails from becoming mincemeat if they were trying to escape the brewery box. I don't think they'll fly that high. Maybe they can. You never know. Quails are quails. They'll do the unexpected. They'll drown in your watering um, system if you let them. Or if it's a marbles in your watering. Uh, what's the thing called? Water. And I believe it's... See how there's writing on this fan? Have the writing facing outside of the box, pointing out. So what you have inside is the grill and no writing, okay? Uh, if this is wrong, I'll make an edit with a, uh, a text, a little caption saying, saying so. What I'd like to do is put, get the supplied long screws, and you notice that the grill is raised. So one side, it's not gonna sit flush, it's gonna hit the fan. That just spinning fan, but on the other side, it clears it. So with that, you can work it out. You put one screw in, just hold it there, and where's my drill? Match the circle of the hole to the circle that's been uh, routed out, and have the cables pointing up, because all your wirings is going to be on top where the lights. Uh, the lights are. So for that, I match it from the back. Oh, sorry, from the outside. So from the outside of the box, you can you can actually see it the circle pretty nicely, like that. That's nice. And it doesn't have to be 100% square because at the end of the day, it's, uh, <clears throat> as long as it's round and it clears behind here from the outside looking in, um, she's good. And I'm happy with that. Two person will make it easier, but not impossible with one. And this doesn't have to be super tight. Like I said, don't overdo it. <laughs> These are all just holding. Once it's attached, it ain't gonna go nowhere. With one screw in, you can do fine adjustments. Like so. That is looking super good. Yeah. So my next screw will be there. And the following third and fourth screw is easy then. Perfect. It's just already positioned correctly. Put it in. This is quite a fun build actually. And making the... Um, Video. There we go. There's the fan. At the back, wires, like I said, up on top. Top. And we'll do the same for the other side, which is situated over here. Maybe this should get a better view. Maybe not because I'm left hand and I'm right hand. <coughs> Once again, get it on the right position, the grill. Uh, you can only go one way, not the other way. So then push the fan and the wires pointing <coughs> up. Now this will be tricky because let's see. So get one screw in. So it's just there. Match up the hole on the outside. See this hole? I'm gonna match it with the diameter of the fan. Which gets <coughs> see, which you can see very clearly from here. So I'm happy with that. Hold your position on. One in and just check again to make sure she's aligned. 
We have moved, but no, it hasn't. Let's do that. Second one's in. Second one's in. 34th would be easy. <sighs> it's amazing how they packed it into that box. That rectangle box. And it's so neat. Without movement, no damage. Everything's still in its own parts. There we go. Watch out. Right, so that's fine, just leave it there. Oh, my back. Um, the wiring we'll do later. So the fans are installed, looking very good, very nice. Okay. Okay, now um, I have put the front facing on the top section with all the gadgets, so the electrical thermostat, uh, light controller, etc. And the bottoms, excuse the, the wires. That's the bottom with the, uh, the runners, the tracks, and there's tracks on top. Here as well. Sorry, where am I? Where's my hand? There we are, running on top and at the bottom. Top tracks over there, and the bottom tracks over there for the perspect. The camera here. So at the moment, that is all loose, um, not secured. Let's take it off before it falls down. Break. Uh, put this there on the floor. That's all with the bottom. So it comes. That's the piece for the bottom. Uh, the green glad wrap stuff is at the front, the tracks, and that's the back. There's a step on the side, that just clips in there, like so, like so. Look at that. Now we're using long screws, L O N G, long screws. Take a seat on the couch, oh, look at that. That's comfort. And all we do is, it's very simple, everything's all flush already um, because it's a little notch out. There's a notch for the top one, there's a notch for the bottom. Look at that. Superbly. Like so. There we go. One side. Get rid of the screw. Am I still in view? Yes, it is on the other side. I'm probably blocking the view. That's instead of seeing the rear of me. Let's go this side and drill with my left hand. Okay. Make sure it's flush. Happy with that. And the next one. To allow, see that? See how the um, the try uh, the the bottom mesh floor pulls out for cleaning. The whole idea of this design that um that uh, we put into it was uh, around the word cleanliness. Uh, clean things has to be clean, has to be easily access, has to be uh, easily washable. Um, and yeah, so it's just poop trays, removable um, floor, you can high pressure hose it once you're down. I wouldn't uh, recommend high pressure hosing inside here because of the electrical on top, but uh, feel free to move the, uh, the mesh floor, that's what it was designed for. So this is designed in Australia for Australian conditions. That sounds pretty good, didn't it? Okay, there we go. Absolutely stunning. Let's take a seat. Ugh. Long screws. And they've only supplied one screw for this. Which is probably all it needs. And then once again, keep it flush. I'm blocking the view, I think. I am. This side will be better. Oh, I wish I had carpet right now. Because my bones are aching. Voila! So that is the um, top facing and the bottom facing done. Okay, for the next part, <coughs> we're going to build a. This is the fence. <coughs> As you can see in the uh, in, on the mesh floor, the coil can run down. And uh, at this stage, the quail can still do their poop on the side of the wall 
on, on the side, the back wall and the front, etc, etc. It can be quite messy when it comes time to clean, especially when you be moving the floor out and there's poop all over the, the wall. It would make it really mucky and yucky. So we're actually building a, a fence inside the breeder box. So they can only poop within here and which and where that meets the floor, it'd be mesh. So they can either poop in this wall <coughs> and into the mesh. So first of all, get you find you can find these four planks, two of the same size, two of the same size. Okay, two longs, two shorts. And of course I already removed all the uh, glad wrap stuff. And what we do is with the long screws, we'll do it like this. There are pre-drilled holes. So I'll just follow it. You can only go one way and not the other. Use long screws. Long screws for I reckon like 95% of everything that we do here. Flush. Done. To the other side, just for the video's sake, let's move across. I think I need knee pads. My knee's absolutely killing me. Uh, absolutely killing me. Ouch. I think I'll grab some. Here we go. Go to the carpet. Oh. Two, three, one, two, three. Look in the video. Perfect. <clears throat> and now what we need to do is do the wiring. Of course at this stage don't plug it in. Use the main plug. We shall see how this goes in. Uh, I believe we can go in from the front. Doors removed because the perspex doors can be opened, uh, closed, and removed if needs be. Okay, okay. Now that is looking fantastic. And if you look at that, it's a perfect match for the floor. Perfect match for the floor. So if I get the camera out here. Mobile. Now, moving this fence up onto, onto the north side, can you see how that's there? Move the left, that's there. So with this, it actually sits, oops, where am I pointing? It sits nicely on the edge. So that means the quails can only and only be on the mesh. They can't unless they can walk vertically on the wall uh, and, and of course with this 
they can jump over this, make a mess of this, or do just scrape it off or clean it or whatever. But I would say 96, 97, 98%, 96% is mesh, which falls through into the poop trays. And quails do jump and they will land in the gaps behind as well. They would definitely will. So there's a, uh, we've allowed for that as well with some, where's the other parts uh, that I have? Let's have a look. With these, uh, now these are the other two along with these two long ones. See, these two long ones, one, two, and two short ones. Now, how do they go? You screw that into the top here, which I will do in a second, like that. Do the same with that. And for this one here, it goes into this side. Let's see. Uh, let's see how that actually sits. There we go. That sits like that. This is like that. It's going to fall in. But I think we'll, we'll, we'll get the idea. Oh, this is it. So that basically acts as a perimeter. And if the quails do jump on here, they're not going to do much. They'll get bored within three, four seconds and they'll jump back down. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. And now we're going to work on <coughs> installing the, uh, the perimeter so that it'll fall in between the gap and get stuck and die. So once again, remove the glad wrap. Protective layer, like so, one here, another one here, come on, tricky to get started, but once we get started, here we are, here we go. So these ones, um, we have to pre-drill it, uh, because it doesn't come drilled. The sides what you need to do is I think, I think the camera can see it Let me across here so you want to just grab any two and just get the right um, overhang because you want the right overhang and before you do so you need your cord just give it a drill push this this drills the hole and this driver and my trusty <coughs> comfort mat. So the overhang we want is <coughs> evenly on both sides. Um, the camera is not really, it's hard to see. What I'm trying to achieve is the right amount of overhang. Maybe I think if I do it on the other side. Move the hole on the side. There we are. Now you can see it from the side. I think I move myself here so the short ones are for the sides we already established that now I just want to get the right overhang so it's flush on this side it's like a picture frame or a window frame so you can be a framer once you finish this you qualify now so it'll be flush double check the top yep happy with that once again, if there's two person, it's easier. Uh, and then of course, we'll just go boom. And you know it's 14 mil, I mean, just estimate. Just drill past the top board, not through to the bottom one. If not, it's not gonna grab. Use the super long screws. With this, look, you don't have to put too many screws, I reckon. One. 
three screws is more than enough. One in the middle, approximately. We just do approximately. Um, close enough is good enough. Okay. And that's the third. Maybe the third one. Even if you just drill halfway, I mean, the screws will pierce the front. That's good. Now, you can work on these long ones down. Of course, you get flush not along the fence line, and because we made it right, this part is beautiful. Uh, and the same with this, I'm just going to three screws, I'm not going to bother with it. Uh, between two and three. One, two, three. But there's, there's no strength needed in this. One. Oh, the other one. <coughs> okay, since I can. Oh, have I peeled the protective layer on this? Because I have. Okay. So do so. Like this. Don't pull off too fast, because you're a nice steady speed. Just come in one go. If you're impatient, take it longer. Look at that. Beautiful protected surface. And with this, we do the same thing. Um, just get flush with the drill perimeter of this. And uh, we will come in a bit, doesn't matter. Uh, it's going to be right on the edge. Uh, and then we'll just put a small little hole, get screwing this, start it off, dry one, flush. And we are happy. Nothing. Let's move it across. I don't know if this part will be secured yet, but that will be in a sec. So, find the middle of this, get this block of wood, mark it there, get this block of wood, the middle should be across there. So we shall do that one, small hole. screws once again. Beautiful. That leaves us with the last one here on the side. Um, we'll flush the front, which is flush, and just apply a nice uh, small hole. Get the magnetic tip. And I'm happy that's flush. And of course, the reason I left that last was to work out the flushness of the bed. Just keep it in place. I can just go ahead and lock this up. Yeah. So what do you do? Man, this is giving me a good workout. Ugh. Go. And here we go. Go. And last but not least, this last screw here. Well, they do give us enough screws, which is fantastic. Ugh. And then we can slash, 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 slash. Now, with that done, I will show you. It's like a picture frame. Can you see? Look at it from this side. See that? There's a perimeter or a flower bed. Yeah, or a window. So with this, we look, uh, look, I guess if you were the hand a lot of times, might as well put more screws in. Why not? The screws left over, might as well do it. Make it even stronger because it does get flat, it gets a bit flexible, a little bit flimsy when I picked it up. So to do that, besides finding the three, there's heaps of There'll be spare screws to eat for dinner, don't you worry. One there. One there. Yeah, because you'll be handling this, taking it out to wash it, so... I guess if you handle it and it's not and it's flimsy, it's not in your best interest, is it? So with this, gotta take care of the flimsiness of things. Let's pick that have a look. Ah, oh, much better. Much more solid. And of course we put it back in there again. Uh,
fantastical. Let me show you how fantastic it is. Here we go. See that? Look how nice that is. It finishes up nicely in there. Finishes up nicely. Okay, and uh, th this leaves us with the top and the perspex door. So the door will run against this. Okay. So yes, there's a bit of a gap there, but the door will run against that. Um, is there anything else we need to be aware of? Let's have a look. Okay. Oh yes. Now there is a special thing that we can do to install to make sure that this stays uh, on top. Because right now, if we pull the um, if we pull the bottom up, this part is going to fall down because this is actually sitting on the mesh floor. So, but these runners we can put on the side here will ensure that this will stay up whilst this is. Uh, whilst the floor is bare, uh, you can actually pull it out. Let's just install that in the next segment. So for this next segment, uh, what I want you to do is get a pencil and just scribe a line along the side, along the back, which I've already done, and scribe a line along the side. And then we're going to take it out, like so, and show you the line that we scribed. Can I do it with one hand? Yes, I can. So, like that. That comes out slowly, one hand, tricky. Okay, now, um, the original two lines are already there. You can see that there's already two lines at the bottom. The third line on top is the one, sorry, the, the third line on top is the one that we described, okay? The bottom two are the lines that... Uh, when in manufacture, manufacturing, they uh, drew it there for you. Okay, so that's just the third line, just a reference point. Now, what I want to show you is with this long part, which is left of the project, one long one and two short ones. Where are they? Yeah, there they are. Two short ones here. One, two. And once again, these are not pre drilled. So I had to pre-drill these holes there. These little holes, these little holes, and these little holes. So with the short one, I did, you know, four. And with the long ones, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, six holes. So let's just peel back the, um, the protective layer. Okay, with the brooder put on his back again. So just, this is <coughs> the bottom. Three space for the poop trays. And then that's the bottom facing, top facing with all the controls. Now I'm going to put the rails at the back. Let's just position this right there, like so. That's good. <coughs> Get my quarters drill. Screws. What we're doing is putting this in the right position. Now, Back to here again, underneath, remember the line that we scribed? That's the top line. Um, I, I scribed that just for you to measure, to make sure that that top line that you scribed and the other two lines that was already pre-scribed from, from the factory matches, so it's, there's a gap. In fact, you don't really have to scribe the top line. Just follow that in there, the ones that's doubled, the bottom, because that's the bottom, and place this rail in there and fasten it. So I'm just going to put it back on here, uh, hopefully that angle's right, let's have a look, yep that's looking pretty good I think, let's put it down here, there we go, using the short screws so you don't go through the, um, to the floorboards, uh, Beautiful. One here.
Yeah. One more up this way, sorry. One more up here. That is pretty strong there. the rails installed and with the brooder box in the same position we're gonna <coughs> put the rudders or the rails on the sides we've done the back one on the floor on the back wall so we put these in now this has to be flush on the to the back as well okay it, there needs to be a gap at the front That's, if not your press back is gonna hit it switch back around sorry and when you pre-drill the holes, mark out so you actually hit in between the slats to drill the holes. I've got four, four holes, four screws for this part here. Let's do it, try it again. So once again, um, we just go off the pencil mark that's from the factory. That's where you pre indicated There we go. Use the short screws. One. There we go. Two. Three. Yes, I got five screws, sorry. Fourth one. And <coughs> another fifth one. One on the bottom. There we go. That's nice. Right. And we'll do the same for the other side. Now the camera is uh, situated on the opposite side, <coughs> just to capture me installing the rails on the other side. So once again, match it up with the pre-drawn line that the factory uh, already screwed on, scrubbed, or written in with a grey lead. Take your short screws, remember? Short screws. Make sure it's hard up against the bottom there, just towards the back, and make sure you match up the lines. Well, if it's all good to go. Let's do the first screw. Let's do the second screw. Oops. Third. Fourth. And lucky last at the bottom. Okay. And the last one at the bottom. This should be all screwing done. Sorry, no, we're going to put the top on. After this, the top. Oops, there's a lock in the back of the case. There we go. Done. See, the notch on top. That's good. So, looking with the brooder right way up again, what we've essentially done is install a runner on the left hand side, the back, and to the right hand side, which is there. Focus. Yep. So, with that runner, I'll show you what this thing does, what the runner does, the purpose of the runner. So with the whole box in view and in focus, so what we do is this window frame thingy gets installed. 
install back inside. Well, not install, but push back inside. Like so. Everything's made to fit. Push it in. Push it in. Lift it back up. That's success. It's actually, it will rest on there. <coughs> now, when you pull the bottom out, guess what? Because that thing sits on railings, on the rails that you just installed, see? this doesn't actually fall down to the ground. It stays situated on top. And when you go to put the floor back in again, and of course you can always take these out as well later on, and when you put the floor back in again, all you do is put it back in, from here, lift it up a touch, so it doesn't catch. And that's it, that's how easy it is. And lift the back up, a touch. There we go. And that's how the system works with the railing on top. Okay. For the next part is the video on how to do the connections for the electrical wires. Uh, please note that I have made a mistake when recording the video. Uh, the heat and the fan thermostat, I've actually mentioned it the wrong way around. So looking at the brooder from the front, the left hand side is the fan for the cooling and the right hand side thermostat is for the heat. Um, in the video I've actually said it the other way around. So in all re reference in this vi uh, upcoming video, please um, note that the connections should be opposite, okay, uh, which is important. So the the thermostat and the uh, uh, and the functionality, whether it be the heat uh, or whether it be the fan for the cooling, please uh, swap it around. Um, follow the instructions by swapping it around. Thank you. Okay, just looking at the front of the facing, I've labelled this for heat. So this will be taking care of the thermostat, taking care of the heat, the heat lamp, and this I've labelled uh, fan cooling. So this is the cooling side of things for the fan. When it, when it gets up to a certain temperature, the fan will turn on. Uh, with this, when it gets up to a certain temperature, the heat will turn off. So it's basically, yeah, working as um, opposites. One for cooling, one for heating. So let's move towards the back to show you how the wiring goes. Of course, having everything unplugged from the mains power. <coughs> this is just my little board I was putting on there. That's actually the perspex for the door. Now, looking, so this side here is... I'll just freeze the frame here, um, just to uh, make it so there's no confusion. Now, you're looking at, from this way the camera is pointing, the left-hand side. You're looking from the back of the brooder, so this is the left-hand side uh, thermostat, as you see it on the screen. Um, please follow the instructions, but use the right-hand side uh, thermostat. So don't follow this video, use the other thermostat. Uh, which is located looking at the same angle on the right hand side and follow the instructions based on that thermostat because this one is the wrong one. Uh, it's very important that you follow uh, this, this correction um, which I'm putting through here. Thanks. In another words is don't use this thermostat that you can see in this video here uh, to connect to the fan but use the other one because this thermostat that you can see now in the uh, in the video is actually for the heat that needs to connect to the heat lamps. So use the other thermostat, which is located on the right hand side, and use that to connect to the fan. Is the cooling fan cooling? So that's the fan. <coughs> so at the back of the thermostat, you have this wire all bunched up with the probe. So this is the actual sensor. So this this can be placed strategically in your brooder box. And coming on the back of the brooder, there is these wires, which is <coughs> in the white uh, PVC case or tube. One long, as you can see, and one short. Grab the short one, and this is the wires from the fan, and just match it up. Doesn't matter which goes to where, <coughs> so as long as they plug in firmly, and then there's a rubber sheath that overlaps to protect it. Um, and then once again, same thing with this one. 
push it's a bullet plug and then push the sheath inside as well so the bullet plug will plug in and in the sheath one is bigger than the other make sure they go in underneath like so now grab the longer one which actually plugs onto the other fan on the left hand side well the right hand side if you're looking from this side just change this angle like so you can see the other fan so, so this is the same cable that was attached to the back of the same thermal set for cooling which is basically spliced out to this and what we do here is plug in the bullet plug like so and plug in the bullet plug here like so that's it and just let it dangle first and then we'll clean it up later on now looking onto this side this side is for the heat the heating I'll do another freeze frame so this the one you're actually looking at is actually for the cooling this is for the fan so use this one to connect to the fan Heating, all right and it's the same deal there is the uh, temperature that's the temperature probe all, all coiled up and then there is a short wire with a red and black that's connecting to the bulb to the left hand side bulb on this side and there's a long wire which is over here yep, still red and black as well basically spliced and that would drag all the way to the right hand side of the box well, from the camera angle the left hand side so but first we need to put the top on so we can actually connect them once the top goes on. So let's go ahead and uh, screw the top on. So the top has been placed temporarily on. Uh, remember how we marked the front? So that was the front. So it faces the front and here the back, here's the power cord that powers everything that you plug into the wall um, to your house power. So there's a notch here, that's for the cable, okay? So make sure it sits in the notch and slowly push it back till it closes up. And once she's there, we'll start tacking the uh, the screws on. Which I'll do now. So with the uh, brooder box uh, sitting on its back now, we'll put the top on, secured. That's the fan for cooling, that's heat. So the heat lamp, LED lamp, heat lamp. So <coughs> with this sitting on here, carefully. So you can see that the back of the thermostat for heat is over here. That's heat. So the camera sits back on here. Uh, just doing another freeze frame, um, you're looking at the left hand side thermostat which is in fact the fan cooling. So this is would have been already rigged up, you would have already rigged this up to the fan 
and so go to your right hand side thermal step and follow this instruction based on the right hand side thermal step thanks got the camera on a bit of a tripod which is quite nice it's a gorilla pod for those who are interested very versatile we take the short wire which is here the red and black and we connect it to hopefully you can see it can you see it yes you can see these are the the two leads sorry it's in the way from the heat lamp and just connect any of the two to any of the two here let's grab one make the connection make sure the sheath covers over it once it's done which it does there we go that is absolutely beautiful so that's connected now we move across to this side um, if we get the tripod to sit sit beautifully okay maybe from this angle I think let me see that's better done four now the other longer lead remember how I said there's always a longer lead and of course make sure you route it so it doesn't tangle up anywhere else most neat neatest connection that's the two leads red and black that's the two prongs on the back of the um the heat lamp so let's get any of the one and connect sheath covered nice plugged in you can feel the bullet grab you can feel it's like a push and then it plugs in so that's that now with the brooder box upside down, as you can see, of course we've taken all the uh, the floor out and the uh, the, the the window frame um, fencing. Now, what you have here is I'm trying to hold another phone which has the the torch. There we go. Oops, sorry. So you have this lead sticking out, coming from the um, that's the LED light controller. Uh, that's the panel for it. Um, we've done the cooling for the fan and we've done the, the heat for the heat lamp all connected. So you have this wire here which you need to undo the two screws which you've put in for this which I've already done which leaves you with the underside of this. So with the underside of this what we do is this can fit. Let's see if we can film it this way. Um, see the, the lip here? That's the lip. Use the raises up. There we go. That's better. Feed any of the red, 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 or, red or black into these two ports, like so. A bit tricky. Open this up. And that's it. Just push it in and tighten up. So as long as it, it just bites into it, you know, don't over tighten it so you actually crush and break the cables. As long as it's tight, that's good. Because there'd be nothing else pulling on it. Um, put this black one inside, like so. Black one's really easy to go in. There we go. Pipe up the wire. There we go. Maybe this one can do a bit better, I think. It loosens this back this right up. Let me push this one right in. That's better. Clamp it down. Sorry, that's not in the camera's view. Done. So once that is done, we can come back around here uh, and see. Get my torch and get my screwdriver. We can place this back to the respective holes. So, tightening up. A bit hard to film with one hand actually. And the cable's in the way. Back it off. There we go, that's clear.
that's it. Done. So that's connected to that. Okay, the right hand side is the heat. Uh, from this point on, the heat and the fan cooling are correctly labelled. Um, I've already uh, fixed up the mistake I made. So from this part onwards, all the references are correct as per the video. Which is connected to the heat lamps, which are the, at the moment I've got an LED light. It's the silver bayonet. And that's the heat lamp as well. The one in the middle is the LED. Uh, I've got the LED in the heat lamp for testing. And on the left hand side is the cooling or the fan for cooling which is connected to the left hand side fan and the right hand side fan. So that's how it's connected. So the left hand side a thermostat is for the fan and cooling. The center is for the, uh, the, the lamp, the light, and that's for the heat. Uh, at the moment I've got the LED light on the heat lamp just for testing. So just make a reference of that. Uh, once you've um, tested the electricals, then you can go ahead with the brood is still upside down, um, install these little cable holders, which is a matter of placing them and hitting it with a hammer, which basically holds the cable on the ceiling uh, without falling down everywhere. So just a hammer and just nail it. Uh, bear in mind, keep wires away from the heat source. See how I've actually um, cleared it. Uh, there's, there's no wires running except the one that powers it. So I'll give you a quick look at the actual um, clip. The clip are these C clips. C with a nail. So these are it. And then you just hold the cable in and hammer it in. So to put in the, uh, the beds for the quails, push it up. First left down, push up, take it down, and this beautiful thing uh, goes inside like so, lift the back a touch, there we go, push it in, lift it back up, there we go, she sits. Now this here is the front and the handle comes with it, two screws in the back holds the handle in place. So this basically, <coughs> this keeps the poop tray hidden and also keeps the, keeps it insulated because at the moment it's the air coming out of here. So just to demonstrate, the mesh floor can come out like so, see that? And once it comes out, that will still be held in place with these runners on the back and the sides which we've installed earlier today. Slide this back in, lift it up a bit, there we go. Push it all the way in, push it all the way to the back. And the quells, as you can see, uh, the poop trays I haven't put them in, they're outside of the house at the moment. That's in place and I'm going to show you the perimeter. See this? See how the quails got nowhere else to go? Well, except pooping onto the mesh. That's all they can do. They can climb up here, a bit of a walk, go back down if they want to, or fly up here and not climb, sorry. Okay, here are the poop trays, which I've just brought in from outside. In each brooder, there's six poop trays. What we do is we take one, slide it in, Perfect fit. Second one, slide it in. Perfect fit. Third one, slide it in. Catch on. Push it all the way in. All the way in. All the way in. Now, this is the cover. Keep the warm air in. Right now the heat is going up actually quite warm in there now. Yeah, it's escaping. So put this back in, like I said, push it up, and run it on the back. Oh, sorry, that's the front. Just always put the back one in first. In the front. There we go. Push it up. Push it down. Here we are. So this is all completely closed. 
with the poop trays installed underneath. <laughs> That's how it looks. Spare ones on top. Um, take out this cover and that's the poop trays. That is the poop tray. That is the poop tray. Okay, so the actual um, the poop tray actually sits within the perimeter. Uh, the poop tray is bigger than the perimeter, so all the manure would definitely won't be going anywhere else except because into the pan, not on the edge. There's no spillage. It's all beautifully done. Okay, so that's how it is. Let's get it back on, and there you have it. A fantastic brooder.